I'm an experimental psychologist by training. Uh, I've been at the University of Manchester for around 17 years now. Uh, and this was actually after I spent um, about three years working in industry and uh, doing a couple of postdocs. So I've kind of you know, shifted around a little bit over the last few years. Uh, and I think talking about academia today and, and this you know, brief overview of my view of academia today is pretty quite different from what my view would have been uh, just, just you know, three or four years or so ago. Um, I'm currently senior lecturer in the Division of Neuroscience and Experimental Psychology. And I guess within the UK, there's always been a sort of uh, difference between universities in terms of their focus on teaching uh, and research. Uh, and I've noticed over the last few years, actually, there's a particular shift in terms of universities' engagement with open research practices. Um, at one end of the spectrum, you've got universities such as Utrecht and UCL, who are very much, and, and a few others who are very much leading the way in terms of open research and uh, adopting open research position statements. Where on the other end of the extreme, you've got many universities who uh, you know think that open research means no more than open access publications. And so it's interesting seeing universities at different stages. Of, of this journey. And that's one of the biggest distinctions that I see between universities um, at the moment. Um, and one thing I should say, if you're interested in uh, staying within academia, if you end up in a more research focused university that hasn't yet engaged with open research or hasn't yet uh, adopted an open research position statement, it's actually a great opportunity to shape it. And you can put your open leadership skills that you've developed uh, on this course into practice so you can kind of educate others about what openness means to you uh, and have that broader discourse. Uh, and one of the challenges I think is also having conversations with people in very different disciplines. Um, in a couple of weeks time, I'm giving a talk to uh, colleagues that will include uh, people with backgrounds in humanities research. So again, it's just understanding uh, kind of the language that they use that actually describes the same things that you're interested in, but just their differences in terminology. Um, if you end up in a more teaching focused institution, it's a great opportunity as well uh, to teach open and reproducible skills to students. Um, within the UK, it's interesting seeing that many undergraduates are now starting university, uh, having actually had practice coding in uh, Python and Scratch at school. Uh, my daughter learned um, how to code uh, in Scratch when she was about six or seven years old. So, uh, you know, these foundational skills, uh, you know, students are now coming into university with. Um, I guess within the context of my own experiences, uh, the, the different talk that I would have given four or five years ago, I would probably have reflected my disillusionment with academia as much as anything else. Uh, you know, as I'm sure people can attest to, academia was is certainly uh, was and still is highly competitive. Uh, some universities really focus on big grants and papers in high impact journals rather than doing robust and reproducible science. So out of, out of my disillusionment, that kind of uh, encouraged me to engage with the broader open research uh, and reproducibility conversations that were going on on Twitter um, at the time, you know, two or three years ago. Uh, and coincidentally, that coinc that occurred when the um, UK Reproducibility Network was founded. So the UK Reproducibility Network, founded by Marcus Munafu at uh, Bristol University, is focused on encouraging universities within the UK to do uh, more reproducible research, uh, adopt more open practices. Um, and as a function of the UKRN developing, um, along with colleagues at Manchester, uh, and Rachel was one of them actually, we, we found that the open research working group, uh, which is a grassroots uh, working group within academia at Manchester that crosses disciplines. We've got, you know, I'm a psychologist, we've got computer scientists, we've got biologists, uh, we've got biostatisticians, um, we've got people in the social sciences as well. Um, and I think that's one of the really important things to do, it's actually to build a community that crosses those traditional academic disciplines. Uh, and one thing that was very useful about the open research working group activity that we're all engaged in is it really raised the profile of open research and reproducibility within the university. Uh, the university knew that they needed to do more to promote open and reproducible research practices, but they didn't know how to do it. 
Um, so the VP for research at Manchester has been hugely supportive of what we've been doing, because in a sense, we're doing the hard work. We're actually getting the, the community uh, started. We're getting the conversations going. Uh, so I, I now sit on the university level open research strategy group, um, because up until you know when I joined, the group had mainly focused uh, on open access side of things because they weren't, they weren't really sure what open research was uh, apart from that. So I think finding your community is really important or creating a new community within your academic environment is important as well. Um, and one thing that's critical, no matter what career stage you're at, is try to find some senior academics in your home institution who'll effectively be vocal supporters for you and introduce you to people. Um, I had a lot of luck at Manchester uh, because I discovered the SSI, the Software Sustainability Institute, has been transformative uh, for both my career and my mental well-being, I have to say. Uh, so meeting people in the context of the SSI has been fantastic. And having, uh, you know, somebody like Carol Goebel, uh, somebody to go and talk to uh, and ask for advice is just fantastic as well, because Carol is just a hugely important, influential and wonderful uh, mentor to have. Uh, and just as these more senior academics will amplify your voice, it's always important to remember that you can amplify the voice of others in your community, and you should do that because there are always voices that we can we can amplify because of our uh, positions uh, that, that that we're in. Um, so just to finish off, I really want you to kind of recognise the fact that you've all got a very unique skill set. Uh, you've got discipline-specific knowledge as well as knowledge about the kind of computational tools needed for openness and reproducibility. And actually not many people have these skills and certainly not many senior academics have these skills either. Uh, so in academia, showing that you're somebody who can actually solve problems in new ways uh, and th where those solutions align with your own goals and values is really powerful ability to demonstrate. Uh, and you could end up being you know, almost the go-to collaborator for other academics wanting to adopt open and reproducible practices. So my final two points I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make, um, and this probably applies outside academia as well, uh, be aware of institutional politics, uh, but try not to get involved uh, if, you, if you can help it. Uh, and the other thing to really say, it's at the end of the day, it's just a job uh, and make sure that you've got life and interests outside of your work.